All right, here we go. So I'm live. I guess I'm live. So I was gonna start without you guys, but then I was like, Dude, don't start without them. Show them. Show them. Show them what's up. Show them what you're gonna do. So I'm gonna tackle a very large painting. This is five by six feet. Okay. And. Uh, Here we go. I'm gonna use a graphite to loosely sketch, to loosely sketch the painting, okay? I'm gonna use a graphite to, to loosely sketch the painting and here we go. here. So I'm looking at the, at the actual um, painting here, okay, at the, not the actual painting, the, an image of the painting. in a bit what it is I am doing here it's so much fun <laughs> this is the, the stuff that I like to do is very uh, um, what's the word what, what word do people use um, Forgot what type of word people used to. They use a word. I don't know what word. When you go after something big, you know what the word is over there, honey? No, you're not listening to me. She's over there somewhere else. There's a word people use when they when, when you go after something big. I just can't think of the word right now. But anyways, if you guys can think of the word. Those are, that's, that's, my, that's my day. Tackling, doing stuff that I can never think I can do. This is, I heard, I heard Picasso, I heard, yeah, I wish I had heard. I read Picasso said that. You know, I heard it in my mind. <laughs> I read Picasso said, I'm always doing things I can't do, that's how I get them done. Uh, most most of my stuff is like that, guys. Like I don't. Most of my stuff is it's just stuff that I I want. I don't even know how I'm gonna get done. Most of my stuff is that way. I'm always tempted to 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 be like, no, don't do it, don't do it. You don't even know how you're gonna get that done. And then there's a part of me that's like, do it, do it. See it through. Who cares? The worst thing that's going to happen is, you know, that ambitious, that's the word. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Who said ambitious? Robert, Robert, thank you so much. Robert. Robert. Scuda. There we go. Vaquero, un gaucho. I like that. Un gaucho de Argentina. Huh? That's, that's, that's where gauchos are from. Pareciera gauchos, ¿verdad? Pareciera que son gauchos. They look like gauchos. But uh, I'm being a little bit ambitious here with this piece. And I mean, did somebody open the door? No. I think it's the, it's the car out there. Ah! 
And here we go. This this is uh, the story of my life again, guys. Doing things that that appear to to be like, dude, how in the hell are you gonna do that? I don't know. I'm just gonna get it done. If if I had an idea how I'm gonna do it, I would never do it. Trust me. I'll never do it. Don't go crazy on me. It's barely Wednesday. So here's where the the artwork is going to start happening. Again, this this uh, canvas measures four by four four by five feet. No, not four by five. Five by six feet. Five by six feet. the fun of it guys how a fly in the studio I feel like I feel like uh, ever since I came to the studio flies were like dude come here you smell the artist fit in here somehow. We're, we're going to make everybody fit. Looks like a family portrait. Thank you for uh, that word ambitious. I was, I was, I was getting kind of like, man, what the hell am I talking about here? So many people in this portrait that it's like, it's like, come on, guys, what do you guys want? I did something like this uh, not long ago. It was, uh, which one was it? It was Velasquez's. Uh, you, guys must, you, you guys must think it's my first painting today, huh? All right, we're gonna stop there and we're gonna keep going with something else now. <laughs> I love that, buenas noches. So this is what I've been doing the drawing with, okay? It's uh, graphite, as you can see here. It's very cool. The reason I like it is because it's big. It's almost as thick as my finger, maybe my, maybe my pinky finger. Buenas noches, malo. 
¿Cómo que malo? Sí, there you go. So, I'm going to continue this instead of uh, doing it with this. Now I'm going to continue it with... Where is it at? This, uh, this thing right here, which is a Shiva oil stick. Can you guys see it? Shiva oil stick. The next phase is going to be uh, marking a little bit more of what's going on. So, what's the hardness of the paper or of the uh, of the pencil? I have no idea. Can you see? It's six B. Sí, es, es, un, es, un, es, una, es un lápiz, grafito, 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 ¿verdad? Porque no tiene acento. Who knows? So let's open this bad boy right here. And let's do this. All right? Vámonos. This one away. And here we go. Find my place? Okay, there's my place. Okay. And the whole the whole thing about using this is to stay see if I were to use a brush I would have to get up and, and continue to in order to continue to, to to paint I would have to get up and well get more paint more oil or whatever but this oil stick is so cool because the whole thing is here already right the whole thing is here gotta open it there you go we can start sliding it. All right. And then, I'm going to start from the bottom because the bottom seems to be very, I mean, that's where the action is. It's <laughs> I like that. The Pirates of the uh, Caribbean, Jack Sparrow. And So much with it. That's that's really the. I don't have to pause. The only reason I pause is because uh, maybe my arm. <laughs> my arm's like, hey, pause for a little bit. I don't really have to pause. You know, it's, uh, it doesn't matter. It's almost like, uh, someone told me, it's like you're sketching and painting, or your paintings are sketches. Uh, yeah, I would probably, I would probably say yeah to that. Very much so. I would probably 
up so you have to laugh. A little bit of tension right here in this line. Let me read a little bit of this because I don't want to neglect you guys. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. Sí, los, los videos en vivo son super lindos. Thank you. The only thing I'm really glad about is that this, uh, the oil sticks don't, they're not, they're not so expensive. I mean, I guess they can get expensive if you, if you use it a lot like me in one painting, but the expense of it is not really what matters here. It's getting the artwork done that is really important. That's really the important part of it. So it's so full of energy, this painting, that it's like it's it's not. It's not like the Vermeer that I did, which was more calm, and it was, you know, this painting is, this painting has a lot of energy. So many things happening around here, that it's just, uh, This almost reminds me of Las Lanzas. I don't know which one was first. The, the, the Lanzas by, by Diego Velazquez. This is, of course, Night Watch. Of course, and I say of course because I'm looking at it, not because, not because it's obvious, but because I'm looking at it. Uh, this is the Night Watch by Rembrandt. It's my own interpretation, expressionist interpretation of it. And it reminds me a lot of Las Lanzas by uh, by Velasquez. So I don't know which one came first, the chicken or the egg. Those of you who are art nerds, let me know. Maybe you can Google it. It's a very interesting painting. Here we have a smaller body. Uh, 
a lot of energy in this little thing as you guys can see walnut oil the stick I like that yeah uh, probably probably I can probably use the walnut oil on the stick uh, normally this this guy looks like Pancho Villa <laughs> maybe that's what I was thinking about uh, maybe I can uh, let it dry right muchas gracias uh, maybe I can let it dry or maybe not. Maybe I could just get started, right? They, it doesn't really matter. When I let this one dry, I usually just let it dry for a night. And it's, it's pretty dry to the touch if I let it dry for a night. Right? It's, it's very much dry to the touch. But I also just get started because I don't, I don't care, right? It's, uh, not that I don't care, but I, I, don't, I don't care. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Uh, one of the ways that I like to create artwork is to is to just move. You know, I've, I've been talking, I've been barking about this left and right. You gotta just move. If you don't move, you're gonna have a hard time creating artwork. By the way, I almost forgot. I can't believe I did this whole thing without my cup. Okay, so here comes the here comes the next thing. Uh, first, I gotta find a place to put my cup right here. This is good. No, because I, I gotta put something else there. I'll put my coffee right here. Around the floor. Uh, all right. So let's get started. I'm gonna use a number 12 brush. Okay. I use a number 12 brush. And let's get started. Let's see how far we get. The whole intention of this thesis is, uh, is because they're spontaneous. It's supposed to be spontaneous. It's supposed to be quick, right? Um, that's the whole point of them, but we'll see. So here we go. for my images. They can get very lost. Here we go. And again, the color is not really so important for me, but but, the, but I, I, I care about a bit of resemblance. This is one of the reasons why I do preliminary uh, sketches, as you guys saw. Because I do care about resemblance. Resemblance is something that I, it makes me, it makes me, it, it, it makes me a little bit accomplished, feel accomplished. A bit of resemblance. Any, any resemblance makes me feel a little bit good. I don't know why. I still can't put my finger on it why, but it does. And Rembrandt, of course, was a very clever colorist. He made sure that you would go around with the color. And you could see the painting. The reason I'm using a thin brush as opposed to a large brush, I, I expressed this the other day, but I'm going to say it in case you do. Most, most likely you haven't seen this. The reason why is because um, there's more movement. The smaller the brush, more movement. But if it's too small, then I can never finish the damn painting, right? So, so it, it can't be too small where I can't, where I can't uh, work on the painting.
have it. Check it out. And rather than just using black, which I'm extremely tempted of using because it will create even uh, a, an interesting feel to it, I'm going to start by using very heavy blues. See what I told you guys with the whole, uh, with the brush thing? There's, there's too many pauses, right? I have to get back. And someone suggested to use uh, the walnut oil, but uh, I, would have to I will have to test that. I will have to test that with different colors and maybe dip, dip the uh, oil stick on the walnut. And maybe that, maybe that could do it, I don't know. I won't know till I test it. All right, and then there's a learning curve too, so. Because uh, just because it works doesn't mean that I know how to master it, right? So there's that, that other aspect of it. It's a very uh, dark painting with 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 um, an intense color on this guy and this young uh, lady. So, I mean, it's it's white, but it's 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 like pearl white. So it's kind of made it glow somehow. He made everything else darker around it. So that's how he did it. How's it going, Walker? Good to see you here. We're playing with a night watch here. I'm doing a, a five by six canvas, foot canvas of the night watch. The kind of shit I get into. <laughs> this is this is my daily This is my daily existence, getting, getting into interesting stuff like this. The trick of it is to almost act as if, uh, well, if there's a trick, right? Some people are going to be like, dude, I don't like the way you do it. 
or I totally love the way you do it. I don't know. But for me, the trick to it is that you almost, it's, it's minimalist. So you have to play with it as if you're playing with a watercolor, but you're using a different medium. I started noticing that when I visited uh, museums and I started seeing paintings by the old masters that were, when they were going, <laughs> when they were going, and I say down now because they, they were getting greater, but they were ready to say bye-bye to this world, right? And I started noticing that. I started noticing what they were doing. And, and one thing that captured me was, uh, well, first of all, the thing that captured my attention was Monet's. Monet's water lilies in, in uh, Giverny, right? They totally capture my, my attention because of the way the last years, right? Not the first water lilies, but the ones where he was ready to say adios and uh, those capture my attention because it almost seemed like he was becoming an abstract expressionist by will, not because of the cataract thing or, you know, remember he had, had surgery, for those of you who are art nerds. Um, by way, it seemed like he had reached just a whole other level. He had reached a whole other level of art, of understanding, right? Not just not just of art, but of understanding. That's what makes the the whole thing interesting. That I believe that he was understanding something that wasn't going to come many, many years later. And I know that the post-impressionists started playing, but I think that no one had gotten as abstract. Not, e not even Cezanne. And I love Cezanne. Cezanne is, 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 is you know, as Matisse, I think Matisse said, father to us all. Cezanne was the father of, of, of modern painting. Uh, all forms of abstraction came from Cezanne prior to anyone else. But Monet was doing something very interesting. And, and I think a lot of people don't pay attention to it because they think that he was old and he had cataracts. But I don't think that that's what was happening. Based on my personal experience looking at the paintings, I think he was onto something. It's just that he didn't have enough time. You know, if he would have been a fucking vampire <laughs> and lived for another, I don't know, 500 years, he would have been Picasso, not Picasso, right? Or who knows? Because maybe, maybe Picasso would have taken the style and be like, I'm oh, Picasso. Anyways, I'm still Picasso. I don't know. But one thing I do know is that, is that it was a very unique form of painting that still, when I, when I think of it, it blows my mind. blows my mind how he was, he was dry painting like this, right? It was very dry. It was very dry. I mean, he had a wet brush. As a matter of fact, his brushes looked like this. This is one of the reasons I started getting this brush. His brushes were like this because he rubbed sideways, right? And his brushes ended up looking like, like, uh, what do you call them? Like arrows. Right? His brushes ended up looking like arrows. I get it. This is not everybody's cup of tea. I totally get it. Everybody's into, uh, well, not everybody, but a lot of people are into a whole uh, hyper realist stuff. Maybe I'm old school. I don't know. But I, I love what the abstract painters were doing in, in, in regards to the, the large stuff, you know, the big, the big works. I love what they were doing. And I feel like like I got a taste of it. When I saw Monet, I got a taste of, of where it all came from. Uh, he wasn't the only one, but he's the best reference I got for that. You know who else I think was doing that? And, 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 and people didn't take notice till, till later. El Greco, Domenico Theocopoulos. The, the Greek painter from Spain, 
I know it doesn't make sense, but it does. El Greco was doing very abstract work. His stuff was so abstract. If you see the brush, you can see it in the brushwork, right? If you see the, the image unified, uh, you, you tend to get misguided. And they're like, well, more, it makes sense. The image is there, but you see the brushwork. You know, he drilled it in there. It was, you can tell that the guy was a, the guy was an expressionist. He was an expressionist painter way, way before his time. It's interesting. Way before his time, he was doing very interesting stuff. And this is the beauty of expressionism, right? That you almost start losing sight of and it was uh, somewhere sight of this dimension. You know, it's almost like you're you enter a dynamic dimension. You start entering like, this is this is where where cubism and, and all this stuff, right, is I think is being born. It's a it's a dynamic place. You you no longer see uh, linear, right? It's no longer linear. It's dynamic. There is no shadows and this and that. There's not only that, I would say. There's, there's more to it, right? You're, you're taking a, you're taking different information. It's not linear information anymore. This is why so many people don't get it. And this is, this, this is the reason I believe that people get confused with abstract or expressionism because they, they don't, because it's created nonlinear. It's also, it's also to be seen nonlinear. The less you think about it, the more you experience it. Because it's not, it's not, it's not linear, right? It's not. It's not binary, it's a spectrum. There's different things happen. There's different things happen. And you take on the information according to your instinct, right? Your instinct starts coming. It starts showing, showing you. Now, it's, it's difficult to do it when you are trying to do realism and mix a little bit of expressionism. It's difficult to do it. I've done it, trust me. It's very difficult to do it. Because you still want to operate within within realist norms, right? With value, shadow, and, and although you're doing many different things, it's not necessarily dynamic. You don't really go in inside of it and out, right? It's it's male and female. That's really what it is. It's male and female. You're playing. You're you're playing inside and out. You're going in and then you're going out. It's uh, it's fucking spiritual. It's a whole other enchilada. It's a whole other enchilada. And it's my belief that some people cannot fathom it, they can't stand it, they can't stand not only not understand it, it's okay if you don't understand it. Shit, I don't understand it. It's okay if you don't understand it. Uh, that's normal, right? That's part of it. But if you can't even stomach it, it's because it's uncomfortable, right? It, it's an uncomfortable piece of work. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. You, you're, you're trying to find it. You're, you're going like this, and you're trying to connect it. Right? You're trying to connect it. It's very uncomfortable. So many people can't even stomach it because of, uh, unless you like abstract work, right? When you, when you.
But maybe we can't stomach it for that reason because it's, it's uncomfortable. You, you are forced to look at something that is like a phantom. Right? You're forced to look at a phantom. You look at, you're, you're forced to look at something that has very little information. That's the word. Very little information. So, so you're like, what, what are you doing? Give me the information. You know, and then if the painter's crazy like me, I'm like, no, I won't give you the information. She said, I don't even know what the information is. How can I give it to you? I'm only giving you what is being given to me. I'm not trying to leave anything out. I know, I know sometimes I speak like that. I'm like, I'm, I leave information out. But it's, it's not really on purpose, believe me. Sometimes the more information you put, the, the more you... you, you you tend to, uh, you start ruining the, 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 the picture. The more, the more information you start putting, you start ruining the picture. And there's a reason for that. The, the, the painting can withstand alone. If the, if the painting is true, it doesn't really need much of you. I know I'm getting into some deep stuff here. But if the painting is true, it doesn't really need much of you. It needs very little of you to, to be born. And this doesn't mean that, I'm not talking about like in a totality of truth in itself. Some, some uh, Jean-Paul Jean Paul Sartre, so Sartre, however you, I'm not talking about some complete idea of truth, of freedom. No, it's, it's, it's just a shit and giggles. That's what it is. Here we go. The painting is chaotic by nature, right? There's a lot of chaos. It's the night watch. There's so much chaos. There's things, all these things happening. But I, I want to be able to, to play with it. I know that there's something happening here that I can not even wish, I cannot even dream, I mean, of really depicting. This is what I like about interpreting paintings because people are like, I'm going to paint the night watch. They try to do it in this extremely realistic style or the, nothing wrong with it, again, you know, because I. Everybody does things different. But I personally feel like you have to tell the you have to tell the poetry, you have to tell the story with your own voice. If you don't if you don't tell the story with your own voice, it's very difficult for the story to be juicy, for the message, right? For the message. To arrive.
Okay, so. Remember when I used to say uh, patches of colors, those of you who are art nerds, you to say, I like patches of colors. They really are. He wasn't playing around. They were patches of colors. He was just, he was a painter of his time, so he wanted to make it as realistic as his time allowed it, right? If he didn't make it somewhat realistic, if he didn't put that element, then the painting would completely, not partially, but completely would have been rejected. He didn't have the luxury that I have today, right? To butcher this painting to my own liking. I mean, I guess he did, but he couldn't have never done anything with it. I'm gonna sell this bad boy, by the way. For those of you interested, I'm open. I'm gonna sell this painting. Bam! This painting is gonna find a casa in no time. But you know what I've been itching to, to, to paint as well? I've been itching to paint uh, Liberty Guiding the People by Eugène Delacroix. So. Yeah, that's something we do next time. It's a hell of a painting. I need some serious. There you go. I need some serious right there. There you go. Right here. So, so far, I think that that's where it's going. Right, Walker? I think so. I think so. That would be a great painting. That would be a fabulous painting to do. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about that painting. And man, I, you know, just little stuff that, that occurs when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm working. I'm like thinking about different stuff, right? I'm like, oh, man. I'm thinking about... Uh, Millet's paintings too. I love Millet. I love those French painters. They, 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 they knew something. I don't know if it was because they were all like a gang of painters. I don't know. They were like, you know, we're gonna rule France or something. I don't know. They were all doing some great stuff. Love it. This is when I get local, right? Because now, now I'm moving, but I start getting a little bit. There's a, there's this, this craziness. <laughs> Fuchsia? Yes, please. I can't believe you guys know about my Walmart oil. I think everybody knows about my, my Walmart oil secret now. <laughs> my secret. If you guys ever, uh, know of the company that does it gram something like that you guys gotta advocate for me tell them hey this dude is always talking about walnut oil and the beautiful effects of walnut oil in a studio send them some free walnut oil would you 
is the world's greatest living artist. Some fun like that. This painting is muy buena. Uh, I'm missing a color though. Missing a color that needs to go there. I'm missing a green right here. There we go. Oh man. I think anything more, and it's not me. So. Before we make matters not into me, let's sign this bad boy. It's supposed to say badass, but there's not enough room, so it says Jose Trujillo. <laughs> yeah. There you have it. I present to you, you guys, you guys, I can't believe you guys, some of you guys sat here through, throughout the whole painting. My homage to the Night Watch by Rembrandt. Man, I'm good. Look at that. I think I do whatever I want. It's like a freaking superpower. I think I do whatever I want. This painting measures five by six feet. And, uh, I don't know, guys. I think I'm on another level now. I think I'm doing uh, the work of the gods. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rembrandt, if you feel offended by this, wherever you are. But it's my turn to shine. You are no longer around, amigo. Look at that. And for perspective, okay, just for a little bit of perspective, I'm going to show you guys. Uh, I'm going to show you guys the, 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 the painting right here. Just for a little bit of perspective. Bam. There it is. Just for a little bit of... Man, this guy's too local. Look. Rembrandt, right? Leno Trujillo. There it is. Look at that. God, man. Some people, some people tell me, dude, why do you love your artwork so much? This is why I love my artwork so much. What are you talking about? This is exactly why I love my artwork so much. I've hit another level. This is what happens when you paint 12 hours a day, guys. This is exactly what happens. Someone has to carry the torch of innovation, right? I know. That's what I'm talking about. Someone has to do it. Look at that. This is the Night Watch. As 2018 intended it. And now it's time to show off. I'm going to go show off uh, other stuff that I've been doing here in my studio. So let's go show off because I got plenty of show ability, show off ability. So this is some of the stuff that I've been working on. Those of you who haven't seen, bam, that's a portrait. This is one of the, uh, it's inspired by one of the classic heads by Mr. Pablo Picasso. Look at those big eyes like Picasso. Picasso's big eyes. That man was intense. I don't know if he was as intense as me. Who knows that? We're still, we're still gonna find out. Da Vinci, Mr. Da Vinci, no more around, so I can take his paintings and I can mess with them. Mr. Vermeer is totally gone, too. I can take the paintings, too, and mess with him. This is the milkmaid by Vermeer. Well, not by Vermeer, but the world's greatest living artist. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I talked to you guys about uh, productivity and time. <laughs> I was talking to you guys about productivity the other day. Uh, 
But what's down there? Ooh, you recognize that? All right, let's do this. Look at that, man. This is how messy my studio gets. My God, man. I'm not even joking, guys. I think I just hit another freaking level. Look at that. And then even the signature is like, I don't want you to write more. I've now become minimalist. My signature is like screaming, I am now minimalist. Leave me alone. You don't have to write more to get your message across. This is what this painting is screaming. This painting is screaming, you, are, sir, are now master of masters. Master of puppets. Master of puppets. Master of puppets. <laughs> I used to love me. Metallic. Look at that. All right, guys. So the painting, uh, the other two paintings uh, are... Well, one of them is 70, 72, 7200. This baby right here, this baby has mucho inside, mucho power. This baby's 7,900 bucks. Oh, I love that creative artists need, need, need to be messy. I'm not afraid anymore. I love that. <laughs> Could wait 3,000. I love that. I'm not afraid anymore. I love Donnie Darko. So, this painting is 7900 Man, it's a steal, guys, for the place I've arrived. I've essentially arrived. Uh, no one needs to tell me that, by the way. I don't need a gallery to tell me that. I know I've arrived. Um, so this is $7,900. If you guys want to take this uh, to Casa, your place of work, just imagine the energy put into this painting. Uh, well, you don't have to imagine it. All you have to do is watch this video again. But imagine the energy that you're going to bring into a place of work or at home. You know, maybe you feel like, oh my God, I need some energy in this place. Bam, there it is. You know, 7900 bucks. I will ship it free anywhere in the U.S. If you're outside the U.S., we're going to cut this baby up. But you got to be serious, okay? Don't make me cut it just because you're like, hey, maybe, I don't know. You got to be serious. Uh, we'll cut this baby up, we'll roll it, and ship it to you, and I'll give you a discount for cutting it up, because now you're going to have to restretch it somewhere, uh, overseas, somewhere, uh, by a, make sure it's a professional, uh, either a handyman or, uh, it's got to be a pro, okay, or a framer, preferably a framer, they, they, they know their stuff better, anyways, the painting is worth 79 okay, and if you are super interested, let me know. This is my pitch. I, you know, I've earned the right to pitch. I just painted this whole piece right now in front of you guys. So I think I've earned the right to pitch. <laughs> and those of you who are like, oh my God, I love it, but I can't afford it. Don't worry. Don't worry. No worry. Uh, I'm making prints. High resolution. Very high end prints. Awesomeness. And the prints are going to be uh, going for about 49 bucks. Small prints, though. It's not going to be this size. Come on, guys. Uh, the prints are going to be, they're going to be limited edition prints. So, so not everybody's going to get one. But a lot of people are going to get one. All right, guys. Thank you so much. This has been almost an hour. I got 20 seconds remaining to this video. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, my God. Why are you charging $7,900 for this painting if it took you less than an hour to do? Because it took me 20 years to learn how to do it in less than an hour. That's why. Take care, guys. Adios.